again, everybody. Dave Stevens again live from Radio Rose. You see the Pat McAfee show, which is about to begin taping over in the background. Sirius XM, ESPN Radio, and all the stars. Emmett Smith just walked by. A lot of guys, Jerry Rice, everywhere. It's somebody who's either played Hall of Famers or legendary coaches. And in fact, my next guest is a legendary coach, and I'm so excited to have him join me today, Hugh Jackson. Thank you for joining me, Coach. Uh, came in just to see me. It's it's really nice. I mean, we don't even really know each other, but uh, I appreciate you taking the time to stop by, Coach, and uh, talk a little bit about life and what's going on in the NFL and, uh, you know, more importantly, what's going on in your life. So taking the time. Coach, how's L.A. treating you already? L.A. is treating me great because this is home. But more so than that, Dave, I just thank you for investing in me, spending the time over the last several years. Uh, obviously, Beth Berg introduced me to you. Uh, what a relationship I have with her, but more so than that, I'm just so excited about the things you do, um, the game that you put on, all the things that you do for uh, student athletes and, and guys who are professional athletes. Just everything that you're about is is definitely what I'm I'm about. Oh, well, thank you, <laughs> Coach. Thank you so much. It's a little humbling coming from you, but uh, so you know, what are your thoughts out of the gate? What are we thinking for the picks? Because I know you're a former head coach, and you know, my curiosity is, you know, you got this Rams defense with Darnold and and, and Miller, and and Burrow got sacked nine times. So every obviously everybody's thinking the advantage. But as a coach, then do you change your offensive game plan as the Bengals either protect more, go quick, slants, uh, no huddle? Like what would you be thinking uh, if you were coaching this big game? Well, you said it. It's going to be in the strategy. That's for sure. I think uh, the Bengals going to have to do some things differently to contain that defensive front. You know, you're talking about arguably one of the best pass rushers from the inside position in Aaron Donald. And then you're talking about Von Miller, who looks like he's having a resurgence again. So they're very strong in the middle. They're very strong on the edge. Jalen Ramsey's one of the best corners in football. Maybe he'll chase chase around all game, but they have to be worried about Higgins and Boyd. So it's going to be a game of strategy. How the Bengals protect this front is going to be the key to the game. And we're going to find out really early. That's going to be fun. And I, I hope that we uh, don't get a, uh, a blowout. You know, because we've had so many amazing playoff right. games. Probably the best postseason I've ever seen as a football fan or you as a coach. Uh, and I'm so glad that you're still a coach. You are the head coach at Grambling State. Mm -hmm. And uh, what has that transition been like to go from the pros to back to college? Well, you know, it's been awesome, to be very honest with you. Obviously, Grambling State, in my opinion, is the King Kong of the HBCU. So that's where Eddie Robinson, one of the greatest coaches in college football coach. So to be able to be one of the leaders of this great university uh, and be able to make decisions about the future of our football program is very exciting to me. Now, you're not going to stay there as long as Eddie did, are you? I, I, don't, have, <laughs> I don't have 56 years and 408 victories in me. I wish I did, but I don't have that much longer. It was so cool. I played in the MIC when I played college football, and I was with Coach Gallardi, uh -huh. who you know won, I guess, all-time winning as coach, and they were back and forth for so many years. But uh, I don't think that the people still realize what great college football – it's not about black college football. Right. It is about the athletes that play there that, that don't get those big chances at Florida or Colorado or whatever. So, you know, what, what made it enticing other than the legend of what Grambling State was? It was the legend. And then it was um, President uh, Rick Gallo, um, who has a passion for putting football right back to where it used to be. And our athletic director, Dr. Travian Scott. And then when I think about the university, we have four Hall of Famers. And to be able to talk to Shaq Harris and Doug Williams and I knew Willie Brown, God bless him, he passed. And it just, when you think about the players that have played there, it's like, why not Grambling State University? Why would you not go and take this on and see if you can make it special? Well, you know, it's ironic that it's Black History Month and yet the NFL continues to not make history mm -hmm. and i know you were a head coach you've been a long time coach in the nfl for the redskins the falcons the Bengals, the head coach of the raiders head coach of the browns mm -hmm. and yet now we're seeing a lawsuit we're seeing all these jobs not going to these african-american coaches and i've talked to a lot of the players here i've talked to the other coaches that said it's going to take the white coaches to stand together, the players to stand together and make something happen. And I just wondered, you know, what your thoughts are on this whole situation? Well, it's disappointing because it's like we've gone backwards. You know, we've had a Rooney rule. 
which people don't understand that rule is not passed through the powers that be. So it's not enforceable. You know, it's just been a rule that's been there. So it's not embedded into the Constitution and bylaw. So it's just a rule. And I think that's part of the problem. But I think people have to go back and understand the history of the league when it first started. Minorities were not part of the league as players or as coaches. And so here we are again today, and some of the same things are are showing themselves. And so I think until somebody really digs deep and go back and understand the history of what's gone on to get us to where we are here today, will it change? But it has to change. So I would hope that someone mandates something to give minorities a chance to feel like they have value in the league and they have a chance to be just what everybody else can be in the league. How much courage did it take for him, knowing that there may have been a job down the road somewhere? He interviewed, obviously, mm -hmm. the disappointment, but the courage of him to be almost a pioneer or a rebel. I mean, what did it take for him to step forward and say, I'm going to say this, I'm going to have a lawsuit, and I may never coach again in, in the pros? It's tough. I mean, that's a hard pill to swallow, and I say that because I know I felt that way. But that tells you what kind of man he is. And I'll, I'll go on record as saying this again. We don't make these claims for our self-gratification. We're not saying these things because they're not true. We're not saying these things because we want people to say bad things to us in social media and all that. We're saying these things because we experienced them. And I think that's what people have to understand. And that's probably what bothers me the most. The truth doesn't matter anymore. It's just like, okay, uh, let's just drown you out because we don't like what you're saying but we're being very truthful and upfront about what is really happening to us. Well, to tell the truth, I thought, hey, I'm going to have Hugh on, and I'm wondering if I could drag up any of his <laughs> old friends or something out there. So let me bring in a friend of yours. I okay. believe his name is, uh, what's his name? Do you know that guy? Greg right. Harrell? Yes, I do know Mr. Harrell. Absolutely. <laughs> I brought in Greg oh, Harrell, who is a former Olympic bobsledder. Uh -huh. uh, so he was in the Olympics uh, you know, with Herschel Walker and those guys. And uh, played a little bit in the NFL. And I think you guys know each other. You want to mm -hmm. say hi to him? How are you oh, doing? Wow. You look you great. Doing? Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, and Greg, before yeah, we get in, told, go ahead. When you going to be up here, Coach, I, I could not miss it. I canceled. I, I just shut everything down. I say, <laughs> well, thank I you. It, it, hey, I would do the same for you because you're that special <laughs> of a man. Well, Greg, uh, we were we were just talking about, you know, the, the situation in the NFL with the lack of black coaches getting hired, hmm. hardly getting interviewed or being promised one thing. And I know, you know, as a player, both sides coaching and things like that, you know, coach has been brutally honest and it is honest because it's a problem that I would tell Roger Goodell to his face if he was standing here. It's like you can't watch eight candidates get hired and they're all white. So right. we talked about, is it going to be the white coaches, the white players that take a stand with their brothers to make this happen? I just wanted to know quickly, Greg, your thoughts. Wow. When I was just listening to coach, when he said the truth doesn't matter, it took me back to 1992 when Herschel Walker, Edwin Moses, Willie Galt, and myself, when we, we were amongst the first African-Americans that changed the sport of bobsledding. Of course, we're African Americans. They wasn't ready for that. So when I when y'all was speaking, I was like, "Wow, that's the same thing we went through." But I was not with coaching; it was that I was performing. So we had to go through three arbitration, and you know, to get voted back in because of a whole lot. Not only because we were professional athletes, but one of the arbitrators said it was because we was black. He mentioned that he told us point blank, and so it's sad. But when Coach said just then, the truth doesn't matter. It, it, it's it's when you get to a point that you got to accept that you don't want to be involved in that. But at the same time, a lot of that is happening in the NFL, and so it took me back to at, at when we was uh, performing in the Olympics in '92. And you guys have experienced it as players, as coaches. I mean, it's the United States. Like, how do we stop? pretending we're in the 1800s and you know most of the majority of the owners in the nfl are white uh i know we have an owner that's trying to buy denver mm -hmm. uh, a former comedian and I, I hope that he might have a chance to do that because until we get black people into those positions they're not just gonna 
it's got to have that trickle down effect. And I just, I don't understand what it's going to take. I mean, you guys talk amongst each other. What, what, well, the biggest thing, Dave, I think you have to understand people don't do what is right. People normally do what is normal. Mm. And I think this has become <laughs> normal. And so that don't make normal. And so that's why I think people do the things that are normal. This has been normal over time and it's not right. So we it's it's now time to change the narrative and do what is right and quit doing what is normal. And Greg, you have an eight and eight record in Miami and you almost make the playoffs. I mean, how could how could he get fired? Yeah, no, it's that right there is mind bothering. And uh, but just like Coach said, because of some of the things that we go through that is We've been doing for so long that it's the normal thing to do, but it's not the right thing to do. We fall back. We fall in that in that category. So, I, I mean, it shocked everybody because when you go and do everything right, but then you the, the results call you to be in a position like this, it shouldn't happen. So that's why uh, you you mentioned earlier when you asked Coach about the position of Coach standing up. And basically taking one for the team, for everybody, it's going to take – it takes things like this to happen to you to see what I say. You know, we all watch Wizard of Oz. You know, until we saw what was really behind the curtain when the curtain was pulled down, then we can be able to adjust and deal with what's really what the truth is. And I think that's what's happening right now. Wow, that's that, that is just point on in this entire conversation. And while I also want to bring in another buddy of mine, uh, your mutual friend, uh, this is Michael Carnavale, who is our life and wellness coach uh, from Optimal Life. And uh, Michael, I, I, I'd like to get a, a white man's perspective on the outside as far as what you've been seeing and how tragic this is. And we shouldn't have to be talking about this at the Super Bowl, we should be celebrating the game, and yet here we are just like every other year, going, why aren't these coaches that are qualified getting a job? Well, you know, I'm going to come from a health wellness coaching perspective, and I'm also going to come from the fact that Greg and I have known each other for over 20 years, and I've actually worked with over 600 pro athletes as a coach, and having played athletics professionally on the baseball side, I can tell you this. We're all human. <laughs> when you turn us inside out, we all act, react, feel, and most importantly, have the same blood, the same background. You know, I'm a, I'm a young person. As a young person, I grew up in the inner city of New York City, so I never saw the color of a person's skin. I always focused on the content of the person. And I think the biggest challenge we've had in this country and we will always have is that we're not focused on people being people. We're all the same, and we all have different views, and we all have different perspectives, but we all we all need the same result. And that's my take. That's the take I brought up my children. And uh, they were all collegiate athletes and they all live the same mantra. We're all, we're, all, we're, all, we're, all, we're all equal in God's eyes and we all need the same, same, same response. And until we get ourselves to that point, we are not being human. This is basically called the human race. And the race is for success. We get it, we've all been athletes. But other than that, there's always this mindset of money and power and people, and there's this mass manipulation, and I don't really have time to take these gentlemen down that conversation, but they all know they all know as well, if not better than I do. But Greg and I, uh, as Greg will always say, and that's how we got together, uh, Coach Jackson. Um, but when I heard that you were going to be on the show, I, I I've actually worked with Greg and Ray Ray Lewis, and I've been connected uh -huh. uh, to these guys for for decades uh, when Ray played and all, and uh, being their coach and wellness pro, um, I've been blessed to, to to learn everything through Greg's eyes and Greg and I uh, we're there, and that's how we were able to put it together because I've been working with Dave Stevens for some time now, and uh, it's been an exciting moment. That's awesome. All right, let's get back to having some fun. So, uh, Greg, <laughs> let me put you on the spot. Have you got a good uh, Coach Jackson, uh, you know, Joe, uh, you know, something that? <laughs> PG re related here, please. <laughs> oh man, let me see. Wow, you taking me back, uh, Coach Jackson? I'm, I'm gonna see. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a quiz your. Okay. Yeah, I'm a quiz you. The, do you remember the first night we met at um at High Tops? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Those were good times. <laughs> that was a good time, but you know we. One thing about Coach Jackson, I'm, I'm thinking about the like you just the question you asked me, but when we got together, 
and he'll 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 contest it this. We just have fun and fellowship uh, with one another, no matter who was in the room. It was brotherhood, and and to be off, you know, off the field when coach would come off the field and meet us over there, we'll have fun, and it it, it will just it wasn't all about football. It was about how's your family. It was about you know what you got going on, what's going on in your life. So. We just been, that's the type of fun we had when we got together. It was just brotherhood. That's what I remember and I treasure. So when you got that job with that position, I was so excited, Coach, because like two weeks after I was with Ray, and he said it couldn't happen to a better person. And uh, the, like the legacy that's over there in Grambling, mm-hmm. you fit right in there, Coach. And so it's perfect. So, so Dave, yeah, so with Coach, when we, the stories I remember – it's just us talking about good old brotherhood. Brothers. Yes. No, you can turn it on him, Coach, though. Do you have anything on him? Oh, I, want to say? I don't. Because that's what it's been. I mean, we've been around so many great men who have aspirations of doing great things and passing it back. When he mentions Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis mentored me. Even though I was a coach, Ray Lewis took me in his home on Friday nights, played cards with me, watched NBA basketball, and talked about his vision for winning and what it took to win at Baltimore. And that's the type of relationships I've always had in the National Football League and personally with people. And that's just, to me, that's what it's all about. You know, those are the things I'm going to remember more than anything. Well, I appreciate you joining me today, Coach. I know you got to get around and anything. Uh, we already talked about the predictions. And, uh, uh, Greg, you got a prediction for the game? Yes, yeah, Cincinnati by three. Ooh, all right. Michael, what do you got? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Greg on on the Cincinnati. I think we we may have a, we may have a new renaissance of a, an old school quarterback <laughs> coming up with this young man Jim with my young man Burrow. So um, I'm fi- I'm feeling the flow. Plus, uh, you know, I, I always have to go with the underdog. It's just in my DNA. And M- Michael, quickly, you as a mindset coach, uh, what would you tell them, or do you know what they're going through right now as far as the focus? You know, the tickets are all set aside, the media stuff is done, and now it's game time. And the biggest challenge for any athlete is to make sure that we're one team, one dream, one goal. You know, you take the you take the skill sets, you put it on the table, but they got to galvanize. And uh, uh, you know, I'm amongst great coaches and, and great athletes here in this conversation. Uh, the better the, that moment is, the most crucial moment in their life. If they can pull it all together in that moment, and everyone can do their job as one team, one goal, one dream, they win. It's a team that can't do that. It's the team that loses. And that's just right. what they're all that great. So you can't take that much greatness in one place and separate it, right? So coach knows best. Well, I got a good team here. I got a head coach. I got a former tight end. I got a guy who could probably be the quarterback running things, and I'll be the short guy on the field trying to tackle everybody and take him down. So <laughs> I appreciate you guys so much. A very sensitive topic, but it's one that needs to be discussed more and more. Mm-hmm. It's not about the glitz and glamour. It's about – the history of the league, the history, they're trying to celebrate 75 years of this league, and we are almost back to square one, and yeah. that's got to change. Final thoughts, Coach? Yeah, no, I first of all, thank you again for the opportunity and for being amongst these great men. Uh, I think you said it. I just think uh, there needs to be change. I think we all recognize that and hope that that happens. How that happens, I think, is the key. You know, and I think people got to really put some time into it and not just come up with just – optics or all those things let's let's do it the right way this time let's really dive into the issues and the things that have happened and see if we can make them better the last thing i will say is i do believe that the Bengals have an unbelievable chance to win this game uh, and i only i've been there for three stints there uh, ownership is awesome the young quarterback is key but michael knows this as well as anybody they have to access that talent in real time Well, thank you, guys. Amazing to have all of you. My final thought is I would like to see a a football league that has as many halftime performers that are (laughs) African-American that would be head coaches. If it's good enough for halftime, they're good enough to be leading the teams on the field. Am I wrong? You're You're right. right. All right, guys. (laughs) Thank you, guys. Joining me, Michael Carnevale. We'll see you later. Greg, thanks for surprising your old friend. You guys need to get together and have uh, dinner or something. It's been way too long since you guys. I, I can work on that. And uh, Greg, 
Coach, thank you guys for thank joining you. me. Dave Stevens again live on Radio Row. My favorite subject and topic of the entire week. It was great to have these guys around again. Somebody's got to talk about it, and what are they going to do, fire me? No, they can't. So <laughs> Dave Stevens here live on Radio Row. You guys are watching perhaps the most impactful show that we've done the entire week. Stay with us, support us, share us, follow us. And we've got our Ability Media crew and Q30 putting their shows together tonight. So people, missing legs, ADHD, anything, we can make an impact. And so can African-American coaches, and we need to have that continue in the league dave stevens right here back i don't know who i got coming up but we'll go drag somebody i'll jump on the floor chase them down and bite their ankles if i have to to get somebody to come up so continue to follow us we'll see you soon